Oke, okay, good morning distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is Esra Nelvi Siagian. I'm the deputy director program uh, at CMU Kitab in Language. The Honorable Dr. Luani Mayani, Director of CMU Kitab in Language. Dr. Wahyudi, Deputy Director for Program and Development from CMU Sekretariat. Mr. Patrick Loach and Veronica uh, Sears from Educational Department of Altisia. Uh, Dr. Muktaruddin Mansyur, PhD, Director CMU Rekfon. Uh, Dr. Susetio Widyas Moro, Deputy Administration from CMU Kitab in Mathematik. Ibu Lili Indar Indarti, Deputy Administration from CMU Kitab in Language. Uh, Pak Agus, Deputy Administration from uh, Rekfon. And Dr. Suharmoko, Deputy Director Administration from CMU Kitab in Language. All invited guests and all distinguished participants. Welcome to the virtual closing ceremony of online language training program. Thank you so much for joining us at the room Zoom meeting, also at the YouTube streaming. Uh, let's praise the Almighty God for His blessing. We are able to organize the online language training program for three months for 600 English, German, and French teachers and lecturers. We are going to start our closing ceremony by listening to the national anthem, Indonesia Raya, Samuel Colors, and Samuel Songs. After that, we can see first the presentation from Patrick Lodge and Veronica Sears from Educational Department of Altisia. They will present about e-learning and COVID and 21st century. Secondly, Dr. Luani Mayani, Director of CMA Kitab in Language, will present the overview of the online training program. And the highlight of our event is closing remarks from Dr. Wahyudi, Deputy Director for Program and Development CMEO Secretariat. And before we leave the room, we have a group photo session. Okay, now we let we start it. We listen to the national anthem, Indonesia Raya, CMEO Colors, and CMEO Songs. Pak Bayu, please.
Ladies and gentlemen, now we will present the conversation between Patrick Loach and Veronica Sears from Educational Department Alticia. They talk about e-learning and COVID and 21st century in the next 25 minutes. Please. Hey. Thank you, Veronique, for your time. So, uh, the idea of this, of the idea of this meeting is, uh, is of course, to introduce yourself. So, I will ask you a couple of questions. Uh, maybe I will introduce myself first. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank uh, Dr. Mayani, Dr. Pasqua Valenzuela, Professor Ayun for the time. Uh, the idea here is to address a couple of issues and a couple of solutions that we we have in, in Alticia and the way we manage distant learning. So this is why I call you Veronique because you're a specialist. Uh, I will let you introduce yourself, of course. Um, so the, the format of, of this interview is like informal way. So I would ask you a couple of questions. Maybe we will interact on some subjects. As I told you before, uh, the project we're working on for CQL and CMAO is targeting uh, specifically teachers. So we had a three months uh, period uh, test uh, that is closing now. So the video I'm recording now is supposed to be shown for the closing ceremony. Um, as I told you, the project was a great success because we have more than 75% of the teachers spending more than 15 hours in the platform, which is- That is which amazing. Is, um, it is amazing. Um, I, I will let you talk about it, uh, maybe with, with the other project you manage in other countries. 
Um, and now the idea is to is to conclude this project and maybe to share your experience and uh, what you what you have what kind of experience you have in other country, uh, because uh, Alticia is uh, is is uh, present in in many countries like Brazil, Mexico, Peru, where the challenges are quite big also. And uh, I think it's an opportunity for us to share what we what we have, uh, uh, what kind of experience we have in these in these countries. So maybe Veronica, we'll let you introduce yourself. Okay, yes. So, uh, hello to everybody uh, listening to this. So, my name is Veronica Skears. Um, I'm a pedagogical expert at Altitia, um, but I also have a PhD in linguistics and I'm a trained foreign language teacher myself. So, I have more than 10 years of experience in teaching, lecturing foreign language, foreign language acquisition in various contexts and languages as well. Um, so, um, you know, I've been researching, I've been uh, training, I've been teaching, lecturing. So um, in this whole process, working with Altissia and uh, at Altissia, I have become, because I wasn't initially, somewhat of an edtech um, enthusiast first and something that became a, spe a speciality as well, because I wasn't trained in this at the beginning, mm. which is probably the case for many teachers. Uh, yeah, so I've been actually really researching, testing, trying out in my own teaching the various approaches to e-learning, blended learning, to really see how we can make them work. Okay, great. So what, you support the different project managers around the countries, right? I do, yes. So we, we've been supporting project managers. They're not always that, um, well, they are very good at that. And, uh, but sometimes they are talking to teachers and they need someone in the field who will understand the different fears, the different um, worries teachers might have. And so sometimes it's just easier to talk with a teacher to talk with a teacher. Okay. And what, what kind of <laughs> challenge do you have to, to address? What kind, of, what, question, what kind of questions they ask you? Well, um, especially when it comes to e-learning, I think a lot of teachers are kind of reluctant to use it because first of all they like potentially their pedagogical freedom and they don't, don't like being imposed a fixed um, solution where they can actually they, they have to use something and they might be feel a bit restricted maybe in their movements and their teaching maybe a bit observed so they're kind of reluctant for that and also we observe this fear this fear of technology maybe fear is a strong word but they're kind of afraid of potentially being replaced being made obsolete by technology it's like that yeah. if we have this platform isn't the teacher obsolete in that case um so that's really a fear of being being replaced that's and true. we try Actually, to alleviate that fear <laughs> yeah i had a couple of teachers in indonesia they came to me like patrick if your program is a success i will lose my job so i had, I had to explain <laughs> them that this is support and everything so what's your answer to, to this concern well, it's it's true. It is a support. It is a tool, and that's itself. So, are teachers being replaced by technology anytime soon? You never know, right? But uh, in the close and even the furthest future, I would say my answer would be a resounding no. Teachers will not be replaced. And actually, in in e-learning and also technology-supported learning, such as blended learning. A teacher is actually still very much at the center. They're central to the process um, because they're actually still in charge. They're the ones still deciding on the activities, how to interact with their learners, and especially they're the ones who are actually choosing the tool. So okay. <laughs> they are still in charge, and that's very important to just bear in mind. So there's, there's, you have to explain a lot. You have to evangelize, I would say. Absolutely, yes. So, <laughs> They're really afraid, but seriously, they're still, they're still at You need, um, in, in blended learning or technology except, uh, um, mediated learning, you do need interaction. You do need just to make it work because, uh, well, in pure e-learning, um, you mentioned earlier your success rates in the project are impressive because in pure e-learning, in pure asynchronous distance learning, dropout rates are huge. People who never sign up Actually, this technology, the screen can become kind of a barrier and keep people from working and they might not feel that motivated or a bit afraid as well of using it because they're not sure how to use it. So this can actually be an obstacle. So there's, if there's a teacher there to mediate, to do the transition between the learners and the technology and maybe also use more interactive activities, for example, in blended yeah. learning, that's actually even better. 
Maybe, can you tell us a little bit more about the blended learning and how it changed with the situation, with the COVID situation? Because usually what I used to say is blended learning uh, require a lot of interaction between the teachers and the students. Uh, now, of course, we have these amazing technology that we are using now, like Teams and everything, but how does it change the relation between the teachers and the students and how Altissia is, is positioning itself in, the, in, this, in this relation? All right, yes, yeah, so blended learning. I think, well, let's make maybe a difference, a distinction between actual blended learning, which is normally supposed to be something really planned ahead. You normally, in normal conditions, don't just uh, switch to an online medium uh, within a couple of weeks and then have to absolutely find a way to assess, for example, do exams online as well. So it's, it's more of um, what we've been living is more what we've been calling emergency remote teaching. And I think we all, we're all trying to find solutions. We're all doing our best. Uh, and with the tools we have, tools we can find, but it's true that we don't have the time to test as much as we'd like to, and we need to, to just take what we got. Um, and that's the difference to actual blended learning. But just to, um, to also support the teachers, because we had all these questions and we had some expertise in, in online learning and teaching, obviously, and also virtual classrooms, uh, which we've been using for several projects. And I have myself been teaching in this and also be assessing teachers, uh, collaborating with various teachers and various projects that, are, that were teaching online. So we had this expertise. And so we decided at Altissia to launch a oh. webinar series to support teachers. Um, and this is actually transforming into videos where we'll be publishing very shortly as well on our website. So uh, just to support teachers in understanding what is blended learning and how to implement it, how to practice the different skills of foreign language learning with our learners and little tips and tricks what we can do just to get something of this. Okay, great. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm just trying to f think of more I could say, but uh, I think your question was even more specific than that, but I got lost. <laughs> well, actually, it, it, it changed with time. With this, this current situation with the COVID restricted the, the, the interaction between humans. So uh, I, was, I was asking about what, what kind of change did you experience between the, the moment you start working at Altissia and, and this very strange moment that we're living now in, in during this COVID period and the, the virus period. What, what kind of change did you, did you experience? Well, I think I, we've been observing um, maybe more people opening up to technology. At the beginning, it was really an emergency and they just took whatever they had, but then they noticed, oh, maybe it's not that bad. And we have actually had teachers who started to enjoy it and who th said that, oh, I hope that this and that could be here to stay using, and, and I will definitely be using this more in my teaching. For example, a teacher who implemented a flipped classroom approach um, with, uh, so technology assisted, so he had a platform, flipped classroom, and then he would do activities in a virtual classroom. Room. I think we've been observing an acceleration of these phenomena and I think it has many advantages, not, not all of them. Of course, it was in very bad conditions and we had to yeah. <laughs> really adapt quickly, but I think it also will have, it's, it's just the beginning of something that might be here to stay and hopefully will accelerate teaching because I think technology is an asset to teaching. Uh, if it's well used. And I think we're just all of us are still learning. Even we had the expertise before, but we're still discovering new ways and new interactions because every teacher really has to make it their own and find their own way of teaching. So there are new ideas coming around, new and also technology is actually responding to the situation. You can see that with the development of all these proctoring tools and new version of LMS, so learning management systems, that are actually listening to teachers and trying to really implement new ways and better collaboration tools. So I think this is really a beginning of something bigger, hopefully, okay. and, and we'll all make progress. Uh, and it's true that interaction is more difficult uh, in yeah. in a classroom um, with from teachers, trainers to learners. Um, it is what well, is this more distance? Of course, this this computer screen we have, it, it does create um, a big distance and also socio-effective emotional distance and also cognitive barrier. But it opens yeah. so many opportunities. Look at us, we're on opposite sides of the globe, literally yeah. different <laughs> continents, and we're still able to talk and discuss without too many obstacles. We just have headphones and a computer and an internet connection. So Africa to Indonesia, it works perfectly fine. 
Yeah. Uh, so it is as important to bear in mind that is it, it opens ways and there are some ways to mediate. And I think communication is key here. Maybe overdo okay. it a bit to really maintain also a, a link to your students. Don't become reduced to just a Zoom window, you know, where you yeah. just see head and shoulders. Um, <laughs> actually show them that you're there. So that means there are many ways of, of also maybe supporting, you know, that social effective link that creates between teachers and learners. Um, which normally in a classroom after a while settles in, you can you can build it up even in a virtual classroom just by showing them that you're there, that you're available, maybe not 24 seven, there are of course limits yeah. to everything, um, but just the little details. For example, a simple thing is if we're uh, talking online, we tend to look at our own screens at our notes, maybe a PowerPoint, and we hardly ever look up into the webcam, which means that actually we're looking at the people which <laughs> Yes, exactly. It's, it's, true. Looking, uh, it's true. You have this impression of talking to the other person, maybe belly yeah. button, right? Yeah. So you don't feel that engaged. You don't have eye contact. Well, you can simulate that by just raising your head, look into the webcam on occasion, and the people will feel more addressed. It will feel okay. more direct. There might actually be a link just to feel a bit more observed as well. That could actually help. So uh, it means so that it's actually been yeah. to be more engaging. So it, it means that because of these problems and the technology, you, you had to change your strategy. Your, the, ped the pedagogic strategy had to change. Did you had you feel that too? Uh, yes, of course. Yeah, you, you can't just, um, you know, there are many elements where you can observe that may, many learners will drop out. They want, for example, you ask them to do something online. They might not do it because they don't feel like it. They, mm. It is indeed um, because of this, this this distance I was talking about, so the emotional and this cognitive distancing, it's more difficult to get motivated. And also you can notice that, um, and the studies that show this, that retention rates are lower, for example, uh, if mm. you're learning online, just simply because it's more difficult to focus online. And also in a Zoom meeting, for example, or in any kind of virtual classroom, you do, you're very, it, it sounds very self-absorbed, but you're actually, um, your focus is broken by observing yourself on the screen. We all tend yep. to do that when we when we see ourselves on the screen. We're like fascinated by our own gestures, our own way of talking. We we're so busy looking at ourselves that we might forget to actually listen to a trainer talking to yeah. us uh, or do the activity that is required of us. So it can happen. So yeah, of course you do need to uh, think of more more ways to engage. As I said, communicate better, um, more probably in, in various media as well. Um, look up, engage people, talk to your screen rather to your notes, um, talk yeah. to actually them, to, uh, address them by their names, repeat information, not just in class, in a virtual class, but put it maybe on a noteboard, put it uh, a virtual one, um, put it in, um, in an email. If you're in a virtual class, it's so easy to get bored and distracted because, well, the internet is just a click away, right? So uh, your learners might be busy with the email, social media, any, anything else. So you really need to focus their attention. If you're drone on with long theoretical explanations, they might not stay with you. They might just yeah. go. <laughs> Even if I they're understand. physically there, mentally they're not. Uh, so it, there's so many distractions, literally just to click away. So the idea is to really be more active, more interactive, talk to them, address them by their names, do various activities, also capture them, their eyes to the screen with screens that are not always repetitive, but just, you know, a change of color, maybe a little animation, something that will move to just get their eyes back on the screen if they're losing focus. So these are little tricks just to focus and get and stay, yeah, there in a, in a, in a, okay. in a virtual classroom. It's, it's, it's so, a little thing. So yeah, Alticia, uh, I don't know about that, but does Alticia have a plan to to how could say summarize all these experience somewhere on the website? Can we share this? So you mentioned about some videos and some content that you plan to share. What, what's the Alticia's plan regarding this uh, this this new challenge? Do, do do you plan do you prepare new material for that? Absolutely, yes. We're busy, currently busy filming these little video capsules. So we're trying to do short, dynamic videos, always replying to one particular focus question, uh, where you will have, for example, how to motivate our learners in a virtual classroom. And there will okay. be little pointers, short videos. Uh, the, sh the first part should be available shortly. I don't have a specific deadline. There are, of course, many technical and technological uh, obstacles we still need to fi figure out. And also, um, but um, we're, we're working on it and it should be available before okay. the end of the year. So it's, it's, included, 
Yeah, it's included in a specific program uh, that you called. It's the teacher support program, right? How do you call this yeah. program? It's it's a it's a. So it, I remember I talked to Melanie. So few. It's been a couple of years. You work on a specific program targeted to teachers to help them to address all all the things you just said. Uh, could you tell us more about that? Yes. So we have launched um, maybe two years back now. We have launched a train the trainer program. That's it. Yeah. Which yes. Which, which really addresses, uh, it's, it's addressed to trainers, teachers who work with the Altitia platform to give them all the tools on one website. So it's a single sign-on with their um, Altitia subscription. So it's the same login and um, password. And also for the, for example, the, um, the, the follow-up page, that's what I meant. Um, but so the, you can access the, the Train the Trainer webpage and then take a look at the ex examples of use of the platform. Also just a video to explain how to use the platform, where, the, where, the, where are the catalogs, how to use them, how can you find the, the context, what are the pedagogical principles behind the, pla the Altisia platform, just to explain everything, just that all the teachers have all the information they need to make really the best of the Altitia platform and to make it their own and have an efficient and useful tool in their teaching. Okay. Um, so that's the train the trainer platform. And in addition to that, we have been, we've been so there, there is some information about blended learning specifically with Altitia on there. Um, but so we've been going more in detail and this, these are, this is information we'll be adding to that web website soon with these new video capsules as well. Okay, great. So, uh, a, a more general question about e-learning: uh, How do you how do you see the future uh, with these kind of tools, and what what do you see in the future is coming? What are the kind of tr the, the big trends in e-learning? E uh, there's so much I think that could can happen, and hopefully will happen. I mean, with the uh, advances, uh, advances in virtual reality, for example, voice recognition, and also artificial in intelligence. So you can, you, these are potentially tools that can bring a lot to um, to online learning, blended learning, and any kind of technology, especially virtual reality, where you could actually do something immersed in a foreign language. Voice recognition, where you could more even more train um, your pronunciation, for example, uh, or little dialogues you could have with an artificial intelligence tool or a bot or something that could actually be really fun things to do. So there are loads of potentials. There are loads of uh, well, developments that need to be done. There are loads of, um, it won't, maybe won't be for tomorrow, I think, but there, you can already see the, the beginning of these, these kind of uh, tools. You can find everywhere and it's actually really fun to play around with them and, see, and, yeah. and consider what you could do in teaching with this. Uh, so uh, it's, um, as I said, the field is, I think, expanding quickly. Yeah. There's a lot of things that are there to also make the teachers, trainers job easier. Uh, and hopefully with this, we will actually see that technology can be a fun tool to teach with. And even the thing is maybe, and what I really hope is that teacher education will actually follow up on this and maybe train teachers and trainers to actually use this technology and teach with technology. That's really something I've been hoping because I myself all these years ago wasn't trained to teach with technology, even though it was there <laughs> back then. Yeah. Uh, but, um, and I think, and that's the issue many trainers encounter these days. They're not trained to this. They don't know that. They're not familiarized with these tools. And so they're afraid of using them. And that creates a barrier. So I think if we add this into teaching training, it's very important to consider this because I think it will be there to stay, hopefully. Yeah. And there's a lot of things that will be coming in the future. Uh, maybe one last question. Uh, I know that Alticia has a very strong connection with the university. Uh, actually, Alticia was born in the University of Gouvain. Um, so uh, we have a lot of people uh, working and collaborating with Alticia to do research and development. I also heard about a project we have with university in Canada, in Brazil. What's, what's your uh, relation and your connection with all these universities? Do, do, do you all collaborate and brainstorm on solutions? Uh, how does it work with, uh, between the pedagogical, I would say, the pedagogical aspect uh, of your job and the relation with the universities? How does it work? Well, it is all 
starting out, especially the collaboration with Canada, I think is quite recent. So it's it's all starting out and establishing. But of course, it's it's a huge potential for a uh, very fruitful exchange, access also to research, very recent research sources that if you're outside of your university, you might not have this huge library. We use a lot of university resources. Thankfully, uh, the Brussels office being, well, the Belgium office being on the campus of the university. So we still have the access to all this. We have everything close to us. So we can still collaborate with work together and also have these insights of all these academic people to just get a lot of different point of views of many very just various different specialities as well because there are people working in artificial intelligence, neural networks, people working more on language acquisition, language teaching, blended learning. So we have all these different experiences where we can actually brainstorm. And that's also something for the blended learning project we've been doing. We've been working with um, uh, a professor in France as well who helped us brainstorm the idea and also gave her own idea and her own experience on this. So we've been, it's really a fruitful exchange we're trying to have with all these various institutions, be it academic, but also other clients that implement blending, blended learning. We really try to get feedback from the field to really answer yeah. the questions that are burning there. So you have a huge, we have a huge community, right? You, you, you collect a lot of uh, feedback from these, these people, from these teachers, especially for, from the Erasmus program, for example. Uh, yes, uh, among others from the Erasmus program. But what we notice as well is that, for example, uh, we've been working in Latin America and Southern America, and people are very interactive there. And there's a huge need also for teacher training. So I've been putting a lot of uh, time into working with these teachers and learning a lot about this. And it's really also important to adapt, to not do something generic, uh, something Eurocentric, but really adapt to the needs of a particular country and the realities on the field for trainers there as well. Great, great. It's actually fascinating. So, what are you working on now? Well, for so now I'm I'm finishing these blended learning webinars. So the um, the last one will be taking place next month. So we will be wrapping up this, and then we're working on these various um and this little video series. So this is very exciting because I'm actually filming those. Uh, in my home because we can't go out. <laughs> We're yeah. still in confinement. COVID. Yeah. Um, COVID uh, uh, yeah, so it's, it's not always easy, but so we'll be, we'll be working on that very hardly to, to just share it with our users very soon. Um, okay. Yeah, and then there's always something to do. <laughs> okay, perfect. I think I think it's okay for now. Uh, we won't. I won't be too long because uh, we have a limited time. The, the meeting is quite short, so I would like to thank you again for your for your time. Um, You're welcome. It was and, a pleasure. Yeah, and uh, see you soon, maybe, and um, all the best. Thank you. All the best, <laughs> and have a lovely day to everybody. Bye bye. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Yeah, thank you for Mr. Patrick and Veronica for addressing this interesting topic. Uh, the platform will not replace the teacher position, but technology can support teachers and learners to use the blended learning. How technology become uh, an asset for the teachers. Then we will listen to Dr. Luhani Mayani, Director of CIA Meokitab in Language. She is going to present the overview of the online training program. Dr. Luhani Mayani, please. Thank you, uh, Ms. Estra. A very good morning to you all. Uh, first of all, please ask, praise the God Almighty for his bless given to us today so that we can gather in this uh, closing ceremony of Simeo Kitabin Language online training on teachers' competence improvement. Secondly, please allow me to extend once again a very warm welcome and also greeting to our honorable guest, Dr. Wahyudi, the Deputy Director of Program and Development of Simeo Secretariat, the directors or the representatives of Simeo Centers in Indonesia, Mr. Mukhtaruddin Mansur PhD, the Center Director of Simeo Recfon. Dr. Sul Hamza, the Deputy Director for Administration of Simeo Biotrop, Dr. Susetio Widias Moro, and Dr. Farida Nurhasana, Deputy Director Administration and Deputy Director for Program of Simeo Kitab in Mathematics, Ms. Lily Indarti Empum, 
Deputy Director of Simeo Kitab in Science, Mr. Sharif Hidayat and Ms. Yoanda Adana, representatives from Sim, uh, Simolek and also representatives from Simeo CSF. Mr. Patrick Lodge, the founder of Alticia, Sikil's partner for this online training. Ms. Veronique Shears from the Educational Department of Alticia, Belgium. Last but not least, are the guests and our beloved participants, 600 teachers from the Southeast Asia who are streaming this closing ceremony from the YouTube live channel of the Ministry of Education and Culture of the Republic of Indonesia. It's a great honor to have you all here in this closing ceremony. Thank you very much for your time, your presence today to support Simeo Kitabin language to carry out one of its programs, promote the quality improvement of language teachers in Southeast Asia region. Dr. Wahyudi, respective guests, ladies and gentlemen, please let me inform you a brief overview and success, uh, successful achievement of this program. This online training had been conducted by Simeo Kitabin Language with an excellent collaboration with Alticia. This online training had been conducted for three month period from the 3rd August till 30th uh, October 2020, focusing on improving the professional competence of English, German and French language teachers. Our honorable guests and participants, this online training had attracted almost 2,000 applicants across Southeast Asia countries. However, the total numbers of selected participants who were given the opportunity to join this online training were only 600 teachers from eight countries. The numbers of participants from Indonesia are 233 teachers from Myanmar, 167 teachers from the Philippines, 139 teachers from Malaysia, 26 teachers, Vietnam, 20 teachers, Brunei Darussalam, 7 teachers, Cambodia, 5 teachers, and Thailand, 3 teachers. From the language learned, there were 476 teachers choosing to improve their proficiency in English. 73 teachers were interested to improve their competency in German, and 51 teachers chose to elevate their language proficiency in French. Dr. Wahiri, ladies and gentlemen, please let me inform you that in this program, within three month period, each participant must join the online training for at least 64 hours. Surprisingly, there were 348 teachers or around 58% joining the online training more than 64 hours. They span between 116 until 434 hours during the training. Therefore, please allow me to express our appreciation for three most diligent teachers during the online training. Congratulations to Ms. Tu A. A. So from Myanmar for spending more than 434 hours to improve uh, her English. Congratulations to Ms. Min Myat So, also from Myanmar, who had spent more than 184 hours to improve her friends. And to Miss Nurhayati Hilda from Indonesia for spending more than 198 hours to improve her German. Respective guests, uh, ladies and gentlemen, another great achievement I would like to share with you is that there are 106 teachers or about 18% who successfully elevate their competen uh, competency one level higher than their previous level. Even 
there are 18 teachers or about 3% who successfully improve their competency two levels or more than their previous levels. Among those 18 remarkable teachers, let us congratulate Miss Elizabeth Kirkpatrick from Malaysia, who successfully elevated her friend's competency level from A2 to C1, and Miss Gypsy Fernandez from the Philippines, who successfully elevated her English competency level from A1 to C1. Dearest guests and participants, after my speech, we will see the testimony video presentation of some particip participants of this online training. We do hope that great experience during the training and good results after the training will be beneficial not only for the teachers themselves, but also give advantage to improve the teaching quality for students' benefit. To close my uh, overview, please allow me to express our sincere gratitude to Simeo Secretariat for continuous, smart, and thoughtful guidance and assistance, and to our beloved colleague, the Board of Directors of Simeo Centers in Indonesia for their kind and warm-hearted support. Last but not least, to Alticia, especially Mr. Patrick Lodge, and his great team for this active and highly committed collaboration with Simeo Kitab in language. And also to our beloved teachers who were fully motivated to join this online training. Thank you very much to you all. And finally, we do hope that Dr. Wahyudi, the Deputy Director Program and Development of Simeo Secretariat would like to give his closing remarks as well as officially close the Simeo Kitabin language online training on teachers' competence improvement. Once again, thank you very much for your kind attention and a very good morning to you all. Please, Bayu, can you play for the Ibu Luhani said that, yeah, thank you. the highlight event, we would like to invite Dr. Wahyudi for closing remarks. He is the Deputy Director for Program and Development of Siamio Sekretariat. Dr. Wahyudi, time is yours. Honorable Dr. Luhani Ilayani, the Director of Simikita in Language, 
Honorable the Directors of Civil Center Indonesia, Honorable Presidati, Honorable Mr. Patrick Lutz, Founder of Alticia, Honorable Mr. Rika Shear, Department of Education Alticia Belgium, Esteemed Staff of Civil Kita Indigates, Distinguished Ladies and Gentlemen, A very pleasant morning from Simu Secretariat in Bangkok, Thailand. On behalf of Dr. Ethel Agnes Pasqua Perinsuya, the Director of Simu Secretariat, may I share with you our warmest greeting from the Simu Secretariat Headquarter in Bangkok, Thailand. Indeed, it is my pleasure to speak in front of you in this very, very important event. Despite this unprecedented and very challenging times due to COVID-19, we would like to thank Simukitep in language or Shiki for conducting online training on teacher competencies improvements from 3rd August to 30th October 2020 using Altesia learning platforms. This is truly proof of Kitep in language commitments to serve the regions despite this very challenging time caused by the COVID-19 pandemic. As we witnessed during the remarks by Dr. Nilo, we are very happy and proud that a total of 600 language teachers from eight CMA member countries have been participate and successfully learned in the set course in three languages, English, French, and German. Uh, we do hope that the in the future, we also look forward that the teachers from all 11 member countries uh, will join in the course of advanced skill. He notes that, you know, like uh, Lao PDR, Timor Leste, and Singapore, there's none teachers joining in this course yet. Furthermore, as already mentioned by Dr. Neil Mayani, I would like again to congratulate to all participants for successfully accomplished all assignments and also completed the courses. Especially congratulate to, you know, uh, the name mentioned by Dr. Niho, uh, Nihlo Majani for the very great success in accomplishing the course. After the meaningful and wonderful learning journey for about three months, today it is marked the end of the course. Yet, indeed, it is not the end at all. In fact, it is just the beginning for all of you as teachers to apply and utilize the knowledge and skills gained from the set course. Moreover, as the alumni of the set course, I'd like to encourage you to create a network and also from the Simu Secretariat, we we'll look forward for CQIL for having like a symposium or even seminar whereby the alumni from this course could share their best practice later on, perhaps uh, next year. Okay. So for uh, our uh, field of teachers, the participants, please be ready you know, uh, to document and to uh, write about uh, what is the best practice from your side that can be shared later on during the symposium or seminar. Once again, we'd like to congratulate the CQIL for this milestone to enhance language teachings in South Asia through various innovation and initiatives. Thank you for Alticia for supporting uh, the CQIL for such wonderful and successful program. We do believe for this program to be successfully implemented, it calls for dedication and hard work. And semi in language works certainly helping Simeo closer to its missions, which is to enhance regional understanding, cooperation, and unity of purpose among member countries for a better quality of life through the establishment of the network and partnership, the provision of data among policy and experts, and also the promotion of sustainable human resource developments. Thank you very much for all for the successful uh, project for the three months. And finally, please allow me by your permissions that by reciting Alhamdulillah, I would like to declare that Semiu Kitab in language online training on teacher competence improvements had from 3rd August to 30th October 2020 
is officially closed. Thank you very much and a pleasant morning to all. Assalamualaikum, sahabat Waalaikumsalam Pak Wahyudi. Thank you Dr. Wahyudi. Please send our best regards to Dr. Ethel and everyone in CMU Sekretariat who are always support uh, Sikil.